What is a jacket? A jacket is a plaster and fiberglass casing formed around a fossil for protection. It not only supports the fossil to keep it from breaking, but keeps dust and dirt off it while stored. It allows the fossil to be flipped over to observe either side without having to handle the specimen directly. It is made in two halves, like a clamshell, with a padded interior to protect the surface of the fossil. The materials used are a deep sandbox with garnet sand preferably, Hydrocal FGR95 dental plaster, fiberglass, polyester felt, polyethylene foam, this is fiberglass cloth, cut to the desired size. Padding is either quarter inch polyester felt or quarter inch polyethylene foam. This is quarter inch polyethylene foam. This is quarter inch polyester felt. Plaster adheres very well to the felt, but it will not adhere to the foam unless the surface is roughened up. Sand the foam well with coarse sandpaper. The surface should feel fuzzy when sanded properly. When mixing plaster, always add the plaster to the water. Let the mixture set for several minutes to absorb water. Then stir until well mixed. The mixture should be fairly thick. The working time of this plaster is about 40 minutes before it starts to set. With foam, the plaster should be worked in well to make a good mechanical bond with the roughened surface. Four to six layers of fiberglass and plaster should be used on small specimens and up to maybe 16 layers on large and heavy specimens. With felt, do not rub the plaster in very much because it can soak through to the other side. Just smooth it gently over the surface. These samples have set for a couple of hours now. It's almost impossible to separate the felt from the plaster. With the foam, where it is not sanded, there is no bonding at all, but where sanded, it holds very well. Let's look at how a jacket is made using felt for padding. Cover the sand with plastic. Garbage bags work well. Bury the fossil to a depth you decide for a seam line, halfway usually. Level the sand under the plastic to form a sharp edge around the fossil. Fill in undercuts. Cover with plastic film to protect the fossil from moisture. Where there are fragile areas, which often include teeth, cover with a layer of eighth inch clay to create a pocket in the jacket. This is so the weight of the specimen will not rest on this area when the jacket is turned over. Cut and fit felt padding over the fossil. Sew the dart together. Cut and shape polyethylene feet. Three feet separated as far apart as possible is the most stable. On long heavy specimens, form the feet in towards the center about one-fifth the length of the jacket from each end. This reduces the length of suspended weight in the center of the bone. Mix plaster and pour onto the felt. Gently smooth the plaster over the felt, taking care not to overwork it into the felt. The plaster can seep through. Add a layer of fiberglass and smooth it until embedded into the plaster. Continue to add more layers of plaster and fiberglass. Occasionally, squeeze the felt 
in around the flange to snugly cradle the specimen. Use 4 inch wide fiberglass strips around the edges to strengthen the flange. Attach the feet with plaster. Stretch 6 inch square patches of fiberglass over each foot. Use at least five or six layers. Adding four or five additional smaller patches right on the tip of the foot would even be better, especially on heavier specimens. Remember, the tip of the feet hold the entire weight of the specimen. I like to cover everything with one last layer of fiberglass just to hold all the patches together. Add one last layer of plaster for surface finishing. Just as the plaster is about to finish setting, smooth the surface with your hand and a little water. There is about a two or three minute window to accomplish this step, so be vigilant. I like to cover the side with plastic while the plaster sets for about an hour. This holds the temperature and moisture in, which helps to harden the surface. Remove the plastic and carefully lift the jacket side off. Clean away any plaster that has seeped through the felt by scraping and blowing away with compressed air. If this is done within an hour of the plaster setting, it is a quick and easy job. If the plaster is allowed to dry out, it is harder to clean off. Wear eye protection. Cover this first side of the jacket with plastic film. Invert the fossil back into it. Fill in undercuts as before. Add clay where pockets are wanted. We want this tip to be free of the jacket, so clay is added. Finish the second half of the jacket following the same steps as with the first half. Carefully lift off the second half and clean the felt. Mark the first half jacket flange where you want to trim it. Determine where you want to drill the bolt together holes. Put the other jacket half on and flip it over. Drill the bolt holes in the first half. Trim the flange edge with a saber saw with the base plate removed, fitted with a composite masonry blade. A good exhaust system is helpful as a lot of dust is produced. Place this trimmed half back on the fossil and mark the second flange edge. Drill the bolt holes. Flip the jacket and trim the flange edges of the second half. With a coarse file, smooth and round the edges of both jacket halves. Sand the edges and surface with coarse sandpaper. After the jacket has thoroughly dried for at least 24 hours, I like to seal the surface with a thin mixture of butvar, especially around the edges to keep the fiberglass fibers out of the user's hands. The butvar also adds a moisture barrier against humidity changes over time. Mark the jacket on all sides with its number, type of bone, femur, skull, and any other useful information. Original tags can be placed in Ziploc bags and bolted onto the jacket so they don't get lost. Bolt the halves together and it's ready for storage. When using foam for padding, two steps, meaning two plaster mixes, are needed to complete each jacket half. This is because the foam is stiffer and needs to be weighted down with sandbags in order to form a snug cradle around the specimen. This is done with the first plaster mix. 
After that sets, a second planter mix is used to attach ribs and feet. Work the plaster in very well around the edges. If the foam edges bond, then the rest of the padding will stay in. On the first step, use about three or four layers of fiberglass. Before the plaster sets up, cover with plastic. Use a two inch square strip of foam in order to press the padding in tightly around the bone to form a snug cradle. Add sandbags all around and on top until the plaster sets. When the plastic is removed, the plaster has a good rough surface for the second layer to adhere to. Do the second layer within about an hour so the first layer doesn't dry out. Wet the first layer with a water spray bottle. First, cover the entire area of the jacket with a layer of plaster and fiberglass for a good bond. Then add the ribs and feet made out of polyethylene foam. Put several layers of fiberglass on the feet and along the edge of the rib for strength. Remember, the strength is not in the polyethylene foam. It is in the number of layers of plaster and fiberglass used. The foam is only a spacer. Finish the rest of the jacket as you do with a felt padded jacket. Undercuts must first be filled in. Here we have used cardboard. Areas like these can be filled in with newspaper or aluminum foil. We don't want any weight on this area when the jacket is turned over, so a layer of eighth inch clay will be put on the surface to form a pocket. To form a pocket, first protect the fossil with foil, tape, or plastic film, then add clay. The teeth on this rostrum are very fragile, so to form a pocket in the jacket, they were first covered with plastic film, then clay, and then cardboard. This area is kept uncovered to support the rostrum. Pockets were formed for these teeth, so they do not touch the jacket. To fit this felt padding over the bone, the excess is pinched off and marked. Cut on the line, overlap, and cut again. Sew the dart together. Felt padding is best used on specimens that are small, fragile, or have a lot of relief. Foam padding is fitted the same way. When sewing foam, make the stitches bigger and wider apart because the thread can cut through the foam. A simple loop over stitch is fine, but on a dart, a baseball stitch may help keep the edges aligned better. Foam padding is better suited for larger and heavier bones, but felt padding works well too. The lower half of this jacket has enough vertical thickness to not require a rib, but the upper half is very thin vertically, so needs a rib added to strengthen it. On heavy jackets, if handles are needed for opening, they can be formed into a rib at the time the jacket is being made or formed on top of the surface. This is time consuming when rushing to finish before the plaster sets. Another solution is to use polyester rope through a foot or a rib. Here the rope has been put through the jacket itself where there is a void on the inside so the rope does not touch the specimen. 